Hi, welcome back to the appendix of this long lecture. <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming back. I appreciate. So in this appendix, I'm going to discuss how we define Ogata index by using operator algebraic formulation of quantum spin chains. And I'm not an expert of this uh, operator algebraic formulation, but let me try. Okay, so this is the slide that I have already shown you in part two. So uh, I work on infinite chain and please recall that this Xi GA, uh, which I call, we, they call star automorphism, but this is simply the standard quantum mechanical transformation of an operator. Okay, you simply sandwich by two uh, unitary and u, u and u dot r. Okay. And this is also the same slide as before. So we concentrate on a, on a ground state omega, which is a unique gap brown state of some Hamiltonian H and it is G invariant. Okay, so this is a new slide. So I start by constructing something called GNS Hilbert space for half infinite chain. So again, I pick an arbitrary site and J and concentrate on this half infinite chain. And by RJ, I denote the sister algebra of local operator local operators on the half infinite chain. It's basically the set of all local operators that live on this half infinite chain. And again, I take completion with, with respect to the operator norm. And again, local operator means uh, an operator that acts on any finite number of spins in this region, okay? And by omega j, I denote the restriction of the ground state omega on this uh, sister algebra rj. Okay, so given a sister algebra rj and a state omega j on it, uh, we can go through a standard, very standard procedure called GNS construction. You can find this in any textbook of sister algebra uh, to construct a Hilbert space hj a representation pi j of the sister algebra on, a, on hj. That means pi j is a linear map from pi j to the to bhj. This is a set of all bounded, operator, bounded operators on hj and a vector omega j in this Herbert space hj with the following two properties. Property number one, well, this omega j a is the expectation value in the ground state, but it can be represented as the vector state, uh, the, the expectation value in a vector state like this. Of course, this is inner product of Hj. And also we see that the vector of this form where A runs over the whole sister algebra uh, is dense in the whole Hilbert space Hj. Okay, uh, with this setting, uh, by noting that the ground state is G invariant, what is this? Well, we call that this is a standard quantum mechanical transformation of the operator A. And since omega is declared to be G invariant, we have this identity. By using this, we can define using standard machinery in sys algebra, unitary operator UG on HJ. And this is a definition. You pick a state of this form, vector of this form. And then when you act on this state, on this vector, it changes into this. But this is very natural. I mean, A is changed to Xi GA. So this is some, this is a very not a standard quantum mechanical transformation. Okay, and by using the fact that this, this form is dense in HJ, and by using this invariance, uh, you can show that this UG can be extended to a unitary operator on HJ. Very nice. So we started from ground state restricted on the half infinite chain and constructed a Hilbert space and also unitary operators. Uh, but you have already seen the punchline, but this is not yet what we want. Uh, you can easily show that this U satisfies this relation. So it gives, they give genuine, a genuine representation of the group G. It's a trivial projective representation, but this is, rather natural because we have already, we have used the fact that omega is G invariant, but we have not yet used the fact that omega is a unique gapped ground state, okay? So in order to use this fact, we need something more, and this is something. Uh, so Rj is a cis algebra, pi j is a representation. So pi j Rj is a subset of uh, all the set of all bounded operators on Hj, and this thing itself is a cis algebra. 
And then there is a standard procedure to make this thing slightly larger and make it into a mathematically natural object called von Neumann algebra. And this procedure is this double prime. Uh, this is called bicommutant, or it's equivalently, this is the closure with respect to the weak topology. But anyway, you get something, some slightly larger object, again, within this. And it's, it's von Neumann algebra. So, but anyway, this is a magic, this is a magical part. So, uh, you know, C star algebra, this part is not very difficult, probably you can study. But then now to understand this part, you have to go through a textbook on operator algebra. But anyway, you got, you, we have this, it's well defined. Now we use the fact that omega is a unique gap ground state. It was shown back in 2013 by Taku Matsui that when omega is a unique gap ground state, then this von Neumann algebra pi rj double prime becomes a type one factor. And type one factor is the most well-behaved form of von Neumann algebra, okay? And then it is well known from the general theory of von Neumann algebra that this type one factor is isomorphic to the set of all bounded operators on some Hilbert, some Hilbert space H tilde. This is a new Hilbert space constructed through this isomorphism. Then uh, the story is that uh, we have a new Hilbert space. Then you can construct a projective representation U tilt G of G on this new Hilbert space. And then this gives a projective representation with non-trivial index INDJ, which takes value of course in the second group cohomology. And this is nothing but the Ogata index. Here's the rough idea of the construction of this U tilt. Uh, you start from the observation that this pi j r j, c star algebra is invariant under the action of this U g and U g star. Uh, U g, this is the unitary operator uh, constructed through GNS representation, okay. Now I want to define star automorphism gamma g on this B h tilt, the set of all bounded operators on this new Hilbert space H still. And this B, this is basically the same as this one, okay? So it, it's almost, so this one is a slightly enlarged version of this one. So you can define this by simply using this UG, UG star like this. Uh, this phi is nothing because uh, they, they are isomorphic, but different things. I noted this, I wrote this map explicitly as fine. So you, you can simply forget about this. So this is gamma G is simply obtained by sandwiching X by UG and UG star. And this is a star automorphism and they of course satisfy this relation. So it gives, again, they give a representation of G. And then uh, by using something called Wigner's theorem, uh, you find, we, we see, we know that there are unitary operators U tilde G uh, on H tilde such that this star automorphism is recovered in this standard form, okay? And uh, this U tilde whose existence and uniqueness is guaranteed by Wiener theorem is the object we looked at here, okay? So uh, this is basically the idea. Okay, so that's it. And so let me, finally advertise my oops, book again. So uh, if you are interested in this kind of thing, and then please think about taking a look at my book where you find more details. Okay, so thank you very, very much for watching this long series of video. And okay, see you somewhere. Goodbye.